Hello, boys and girls. It is Bible time again, and I'm so excited about um, what we're going to learn today. Something pretty neat is going to happen, you're going to see from God's holy word. But let's start today, boys and girls, with a pledge to the Christian flag. Boys and girls, would you stand with me, please? Take your right hand, put it over your heart, look at the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the royal master leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banner go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus going on before. Wow, that was a great job, boys and girls. You bow your head and close your eyes with me and let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for another day that we can learn a lesson from your holy word. Thank you for loving us so much. Lord, please keep my boys and girls safe and healthy at home with their families and help them to learn all that you want them to learn today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, we are going to sing our song again that is um, our new Bible verse, but I'm not going to sing it with the CD today. When I played it back, I saw that or heard that it really didn't come through very good. I think we can just do this one all by ourselves. Shall we try? Put on the whole armor of God, it's called. Ephesians, say it with me, Ephesians 6, 11. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the tricks, the wiles, the lies of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. Let's try singing it. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. That's Ephesians 6, 11. All right, very good. Another verse that we had learned in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, talks about children obeying your parents in the Lord. And the next verse tells us to honor our father and our mother. Well, we learned that, didn't we, with the Ten Commandments. Do you remember which commandment it was? It says to honor your father and mother. Do you remember? Which one is it? That's right, commandment number five, honor thy father and thy mother. Well, we're going to start out by singing, um, children obey your parents. Would you sing that with me? Children obey your parents. Children obey your parents. Children obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor 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 your father and mother honor 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 your father and mother children obey your parents children obey your parents children obey your parents in the lord for this is right Good job, boys and girls. So in Ephesians chapter 6, we learn, first of all, obey our parents, give them honor, honor our parents, and then we're learning now in verse 11 about putting on the armor of God. Well, boys and girls, it's time for our Bible lesson. Are you ready? Can you say it with me, please? I open my Bible so carefully. For it's a special book, you see. It tells me of God. And his love for me, oh, I hope you're going to sit and listen so quietly. And I'm going to move my camera thing down a little bit. Hold on here. So that you can see it's God's holy word that I'm teaching. You see, boys and girls, it's really not important what I say and what I think. What's important is what God says. And when Miss Comstock teaches the Bible, I'm teaching you God's 
holy word. It's like God speaking to us through his word. Well, let's see what we can learn today. We found out that Joshua, the leader of the people of Israel, when he prayed, when he sought God's will, like Jim Elliot did, teach me to do thy, thy will, uh, for thou art my God. When Joshua did that, things went right. And when Joshua didn't, things went wrong. Can you remember the two times that Joshua forgot to pray? Well, one time was when they went to the battle of Ai, the small city of Ai. And instead of praying and asking God what to do, he just kind of checked it out himself and only sent 3,000 men and 36 of his soldiers died because of one man, one man's sin named Achan. If he had prayed, if Joshua had prayed about it, God would have told him, no, you can't go to do another battle until you get sin out of your camp. But he didn't pray. Well, then there was another time. Well, let's take a look at this one first. This is when he did pray. He wanted to know how to get victory in the city of Jericho. And Jesus met him, the captain of the host, uh, the Lord's host, and told him how to get the battle, to win the battle of Jericho. And it happened just like he said it would. Okay. But when he didn't pray, things went wrong. Let's look at another time he didn't pray. Remember when the Gibeonites came? They pretended that they lived far, far away. They said, oh, we, we come from a far country, far away from you. Why, look, look at the bread we have left. It's all moldy and hard. And our clothes and oh, our donkey is so skinny, so thin now. Because we've traveled such a long ways. Please, please make a peace treaty with us. Oh, please, just we will, we'll even be your servants, but just make peace with us. Well, Joshua forgot to pray. Joshua didn't ask God what to do. Joshua made a peace treaty with the Gibeonites. And about three days later, found out that they didn't live far, far, far away. They lived very close. But he made a peace treaty with them. He couldn't go um, back from it. He said, okay, well, you are going to be hewers of wood, cut down our wood for our fires, and carry our water for us. You're going to be servants. Well, you know, when we don't pray, sometimes problems happen. But Joshua, maybe he's learned a lesson now. Maybe you think now he's going to pray before he does anything else? Hmm, maybe. Well, there was a king that lived in Jerusalem, okay? And this king, he's got kind of a strange name, Ed, Adonai Zedek, Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem. Well, he heard all oh, the Israelites did because of God, how God gave them the victory over Jericho and then over Ai. And, but even before that, parting the Jordan River so they could walk through and, and then what all that God did there to Egypt. Well, this, this king was scared. He thought, oh, I've got to get some help. He would thought he would go to the Gibeonites and get help from them, but no, they made a peace treaty with these Israelites. No, he wasn't going to get help from them, but he called four other kings. He called the king um, of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. He said, come with your soldiers. Come and help me. We've got to, first we're going to destroy the Gibeonites because they made peace with Israel. Come on, I need your help. Come and help me. And so they did. They came with their soldiers and they were going to fight against, first of all, Gibeon. And then they thought they could then get a uh, victory over Israel. And the Gibeonites called out to to Joshua, sent messengers to Joshua. And the Israelites says, please, please come help us. These, these five kings have come with their soldiers to make war with us. We need your help. Well, what was Joshua going to do? He had to go help because he had made a peace treaty. He made a league or a covenant with them. So even though he didn't ask God, he didn't obey God, because he did this and made this peace treaty, he had to go and help them. And so he did. He went with his soldiers, and God said, don't be afraid. The Lord said, do not be afraid of them, 
Okay, I'm going to read it to you right here from God's word. It says, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came suddenly and went there quickly to help the Gibeonites. Well, as they did the battle, they were fighting this battle. All of a sudden, boys and girls, God sent down great hailstones from heaven. Now, first they had, they were fighting, but the Bible says that there was more of the enemy died from the hailstone than from the soldiers with Joshua. But as they were fighting, they knew they just needed to have a little bit more daylight to win the victory. Joshua looked up and said, son, stand thou still. Moon, you stand still. And God listened to Joshua and did what Joshua asked him to do. He made the sun stand still for a certain length of time. And the moon not go around the earth and the sun not move on its axis. It stood still. And Joshua and his soldiers fought the battle and won the battle against five kings. Five! Five kings and their enemies. God was going to give Israel, and I'll say that one for tomorrow, all of this land. Boys and girls, it's important for us to spend time every day praying. Ms. Comstock prays for you kids every morning. I pray that God will help your mommies and daddies or, or grandmas or whoever it is that's, that's uh, helping you get your lessons done. I'm praying that God will help them and help you to learn. Make sure you keep doing your phonics and your numbers and your writing. Oh, we want to get better and better at our writing, don't we? And I know you can do it. And I am looking forward to listening to you reading to me. Why, already I got to hear Tyler read. And Tyler did a great job. And I know the rest of you kids are going to read. And Mama's going to record it and send it to me. And oh, I can't wait to see you on the recording and listen to you reading. But don't forget, you got to do a Bible verse too. Last week, remember, we did John 17, 17. Remember? Say it with me, please. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. God wants us to be set apart for, for his word and to obey his word. Set us apart. We don't need to be like the world. No, we want to be more like Jesus, like Jesus. Okay? We want to be Christians that are pleasing the Lord. And then this week's verse, Ephesians 6, 11, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6, 11. Let's ask God to help us, shall we? Put your head. Close your eyes, Lord. Thank you for this lesson. Lord, Joshua, when he prayed, Lord, he got your help. Help us to remember that you're right there with us too. The very same God that helped Joshua is the very same God that you that are going to help us, help my boys and girls as they do their phonics and numbers and writing and reading. Lord, help each and every one of them to just do their very best for you. And Lord, thank you for the Bible, your holy word that teaches us all about you. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, you did such a good job today. And I want to tell you, I'm looking forward to Tomorrow is the very last lesson from the book of Joshua. The very last one. Then we'll go with something new. I love you, boys and girls. Bye-bye now.